All right, so let's review some of the prologue that we covered last time. So if we want to define some facts in our prologue database, so we'll say that Bob knows scheme and that Alice knows scheme. And then we'll also say that Alice knows prologue. All right, so these facts say that whoever this parameter is, they know scheme or they know prologue. So now we can write a rule, and that rule is going to be knows scheme uh, passes 240, and a student passes 240 if they know scheme, and if they know prologue. Okay, so let's uh, open up SWI Prolog and consult that file. Okay, so there we go. And so now, let's see who passes 240. And it looks like we have an error. So, ah, I typed this as just no prologue. And I consult, consult the file again. So now we say Alice passes 240. And Bob doesn't pass 240 because while Bob knows scheme, Bob doesn't know prolog. Okay, so there's a lot of math functions that we can use. Now remember, prolog isn't ideal for a lot of math, but there are some things we can do. So we can double x by saying y is x times 2. Or this rule will succeed when, given an x, y is x times 2. And if, you're, if it's not given y, then it'll multiply 2 times x and unify y with that. We can also do something a little more complicated, where we have x and y, and that rule succeeds when y is less than the square root of x. And you'll notice that this is a function that returns a value, and then we can do a comparison with it. There are also some trigonomic functions that we can use. So we'll do tangent here. And here we're saying that give me an x and I will give you y where y is the tangent of x. And I can also check for divisibility. So we say that y divides x if 0 is x mod y. So let's take a look at some of these rules and how they work. If I say double xy, that doesn't work because I haven't consulted. Now, it tells me that the arguments are not sufficiently instantiated. And what that means is, is notice this line here. Uh, these numbers are the references it's using for the variable. And it's saying, so this variable is this variable times 2. The problem is, what's the value of this variable? It can't multiply it by 2. So if I say double 10, then it will return 20 because in that case it knew that this variable should be unified with 20 or with 10 and it was able to multiply that by 2. If I say double 5, 8, that's false because 5 isn't, or 8 isn't 2 times 5. But if I put 10 here, that's true because again, it's able to unify everything. And I can say less than square root. We'll say 2, 10. So let's say 310, so that we're cutting it closer. And that evaluates to false, because I did this backwards. 10 should be the number that we're taking the square root of, and then 3 should be less than. So there we go. And again, this one won't give you values, because it doesn't, it can't instantiate them. It can't compare that, it can't compare the value of this unknown variable to the square root of 10.
so the tangent of So there we go, we get the tangent of 30. And it looks like that's 30 see, radians, not 30 degrees. Yeah, and I keep misspelling this. What am I spelling wrong? Oh, it looks like I spelled it wrong up here. I spelled it tan get. Okay. So again, whenever you notice yourself, don't do what I just did there where I just said, yeah, autocorrect, autocorrect, sure. Uh, that meant I had a typo. Okay, so let's add some facts. And these are going to be some facts dealing with nutrition. So for each of these facts, we have the name of the food, the number of calories, the amount of fat, the amount of carbs, and the amount of protein. So we can write some different rules. So let's say that we want to check to see if which of two elements is lower fat. So X and uh, we have two foods. Actually, let's call this uh, food one and food two so that we can keep track of what's going on inside our actual rule. And Let's say that we need to get the, the fat content of the two foods. So we can get the nutrition for food one. And we don't care about the calories. We do care about the fat. We don't really care about the carbs. And we don't care about the protein. And we'll do the same thing for food two. Again, getting its fat content. And now we're going to check that fat one is less than fat two. And if that's the case, then food one is lower fat than food two. So we need to consult. And so uh, let's check to see if, for example, an egg is lower fat than cereal. That's false. But if we ask if cereal is lower fat than an egg, then it'll tell us yes. Because in that case, cereal does have lower fat than an egg. Now, suppose we instead wanted to say, give me a rule. So this lower fat 2 is going to be true if food one is less than uh, food two, at least the fat content. So let's write a rule here where we say low food. Now, we're going to need to do the same thing here where we get the two fats. But here, we're going to have a third parameter that's going to be this is what the this is which of these has the, the the least fat content, and let me write that up here so we don't forget. And we're gonna set low food equal to that value. So here we're gonna have fat one is less than fat two, so that means food one is lower fat than food two. So low food is fat one, or I'm sorry, is food one. Now in this case. We don't have to do an assignment. We can just say food one here. If we want two values to be equal, if, if two variables need to be equal in scheme, then give them the same name. I need a second rule here for the for the case where fat two is less than fat three. Okay. And actually, in this case, if they're equal, we'll just use fat two. And to do less than or equal to, we put the equal sign first. And again, the result here is food two, because once I check these, fat two is less than or equal to fat one. And if that's the case, food two is the lower fat food. Okay, so that's just a different way of writing that rule so that it actually finds which one is, is 
the lower fat. I can also write helper methods to do things like get the protein content of a food. And here I use the nutrition fact for that food. And I don't care about the calories, the fat, the carbs, but I do care about the protein. So that's a helper sort of rule to where if I just wanted to get the protein content, I would have to say nutrition food underscore 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 protein. I could just use this structure to get that. Now I can write a rule x and y to check if x if x has more protein than y and let's do food one and uh, food one and instead of x y up here it's always good to do this because it just makes it easier to see what your code is doing um, and then our condition here is Protein 1 is greater than protein 2. So let's consult and let's see which foods have more protein than other foods. So eggs have more protein than bacon, eggs have more protein than cereal and toast and fruit and juice. Bacon has more protein than cereal and toast and fruit. Bacon has more protein than juice. Cereal has more protein than fruit. Cereal has more protein than juice. Oatmeal has more protein than bacon and cereal and toast and fruit and juice. And toast has more protein than fruit and juice. So again, I'm going to quit this, but um, you can see it would go through all of those. And then we can do checks. We could say um, something like more protein oatmeal bacon and that's true I could also say more protein steak and bread and that's false but again it's not false because that's not true in the real world it's false because I don't have facts that allow prolog to check that the more protein rule is true so one last thing before we stop this video we talked last time briefly about ways to get a rule to execute on consulting and this is just really nice for if i want to test some code or, or have something run regularly so again i don't have a head in this rule so it's always going to be true and then i'm going to get the nutrition facts for an egg I don't care about the carbs and I care about the protein. So then I'm going to write so the calories is going to be whatever that variable is. And I'll do the same for fat and protein and then I'll end with a new line now again normally you're not going to put this inside of a rule but this is a special case where I want this particular thing to be executed when I consult my file so now when I consult this notice I get some output right here and then I can go back and clean this up a little bit if I choose notice all I have to do is consult and that that rule executes and it prints out those things so that's just a handy thing to do a lot of times I'll give you some sample code like that that you can add that will test your code and, and it also gives you an idea of how to use the, the the fact or the rule because here we have the fact and you can see we're using it to get the nutrition information for some particular type of food